Welcome back to my School Bus Conversion Project. A lot of the work I do is on the computer, and this couch I built gives me somewhere to sit while using the computer. However, I need somewhere to put a monitor, especially when working with my desktop computer. I decided to build a monitor stand which would mount to the underside of the bed. Since I also want to be able to sit on the couch while not working on the computer, I need some way for the monitor to fold away when not in use. The first design I came up with used a pair of linear rails, which I've colored blue in this sketch. The main arm, in green, would slide down the rails, and the secondary arm, in purple, would change the angle of the first arm as it moved. A set of gas struts, which I've drawn in red here, provide a force to counter gravity and make it easy to raise and lower. The light blue arm, which the monitor is mounted to, needs to be able to pivot around the base of the green arm so that I can reorient the monitors if necessary. This design is very mechanically complex. I actually started building it before I even had the bus. I bolted these linear rails to this base plate, both of which are sitting in a pile of stuff that I need to come back to, but by the time I got around to building the monitor arm, I wanted something a little less complex. So a couple months ago, I started on a new design. This uses a single cantilevered arm in green here to position the monitor and allow me to raise and lower it. The monitors have to be pivoted by hand on the support arm, which I've drawn in red. There's a second rod, which I've drawn in blue, which runs through the middle of the green arm and keeps the monitors level thanks to the parallelogram effect. The whole thing pivots on a pipe, which I've drawn in light blue, which is a very tight fit around a smaller pipe in purple, which is welded to the base plate. The gas struts in orange counteract the weight of the monitors to again make things easy to move, and to make things stay in place, I'm using some fric friction hinges for the ends of the green tube, which combined with the gas struts should make it hold its position wherever I put it. So the first iteration of this used these two parts, uh, which were supposed to rotate on each other. This whole outer bit is supposed to rotate on this central shaft. Uh, and I managed to get these two pieces so stuck together that I cannot free them at all. Uh, I've tried a crowbar, I've tried a wrench, I've tried a bearing puller. Uh, these are absolutely stuck. And so I spent a little while trying to think on uh, how to do this better. All oh, right, I also had this piece that was supposed to bolt on here and keep that in place. Um, and so I redesigned uh, the whole mechanism that mounts this uh, and makes it able to rotate on the bottom of the bed frame. And this new mechanism is being almost entirely made out of this single sheet of steel. Uh, so I've marked out uh, some cut lines to make the parts for this. After some more cutting and welding, this is what I have. This is upside down from how it's going to mount on the actual system, which is going to hang from the ceiling. Now I need to make the arms that adjust the spring tension. So this bar is going to form the two arms that hold the tension on the gas springs. Uh, I'm making it as a single piece right now, and then I'm going to cut it in half uh, down this blue line uh, once I've finished all the drilling operations. This just gives me a longer handle to hold on to while I'm doing things on the drill press. So I've drilled two holes in the middle, uh, which are going to hold the bolts that go into these two nuts. And then I've drilled and tapped two holes on the end uh, which will hold the uh, struts that hold the end of the gas springs. And now I just need to make two more uh, drilled and tapped holes for the bolts that will go through this and push against these two side plates to adjust the depth uh, at which this sits. So this is the finished top mounting assembly. These things uh, in the corner here uh, are attached, uh, well, they're the attachment points for the gas struts. So the idea here 
is that these bolts here uh, raise or lower uh, the connection points, and that changes the amount of leverage that the gas struts have, which means that we can adjust the uh, amount of force on the monitor arm to correct for the monitor's weight, and if we want to add additional weight to it, like a webcam, for example. This isn't actually the right size drill. Uh, I'm tapping a metric M8 hole, and this is an imperial size J drill, which uh, works out to be a little bit oversized. But that's fine because in this case, none of the load is being applied axially in the direction of the threads. It's all applied uh, against the walls of the hole. So there isn't actually a lot of force trying to pull the screw in or out. So if the threads are a little bit underformed, that's fine. like we're through. It's a semi-blind hole. It's not really a blind hole, but I can't see the other side, so just have to go by feel to figure out when it's broken through. And there's our nice tapped hole. It's not centered in the boss, but it's not supposed to be. The boss was just uh, welded there roughly, uh, and then the hole was actually located uh, based on the length of the gas spring. So this should be put the hole in the exact correct place. And now I've run into a small conundrum. I've installed the first gas strut on what will be the left side of this, and I was putting in these little uh, bosses that the gas struts clip into. There isn't one here, and that's because while this was a package with two gas struts that should have contained four of these, it only contained three. Until I can find a suitable replacement for that, I can't install the other gas strut because I don't have anything to clip it into on this end. Well, I was adjusting uh, the tension of the gas struts, and this friction hinge snapped. Well, these friction hinges were sort of the core of the whole project. Not entirely sure what to do here. I did find the other missing uh, tie bolt. Uh, I forgot that when I'd been trying to unstick this old thing, I had threaded it into one of those holes. But yeah, so this has broken the whole uh, parallelogram mechanism that adjusts the fit at this or just the angle at this end. So... Hmm. Knowing that these hinges are apparently made out of some... I don't know, that might even be zinc. It does not look like a very strong 
metal, that, that's all brittle fracture. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what to do about this. I'll probably have to sleep on it. So I decided on making a parallel bar linkage for this to move it up and down. And uh, I wanted to make sure that I had the uh, rough shape right. So I did a mock-up in cardboard. So the idea here is that whether it is horizontal or vertical, uh, there's still space between these, so it's still somewhat rigid in both configurations. Now, since I need to make four of these, which all need to have the holes in exactly the same place, I'm just going to weld them together and drill the holes, and then I will cut the welds off afterwards. Yeah, for a big hole like this, it would be better to do it on the drill press rather than having to take all the torque through your wrist. The problem is, my drill press doesn't have as much torque as my hand drill does, so I can't do this hole at all on the drill press. Okay, I should probably do. Okay, time for final assembly. So to make this rotate smoothly, uh, it needs to rotate in a gap that's a little bit thicker than, or a little bit wider than it is thick. So I've got uh, a circle of steel that I cut out from the inside of this hole. And then I'm putting a five thousandths of an inch thick uh, brass shim on top of that. So that's going to give us just that little bit of clearance to allow it to rotate smoothly. Then this plate goes on top. And 
and then I need something to drive that in with because that is a lock nut. So that is fully tightened down, but my arm can still rotate freely because of that extra clearance. Perfect. I set up this microcontroller board based on an ESP32, uh, which can run this set of uh, LED uh, RGB lights that run under the bed, so this way I can get proper lighting under here. And this runs over the network, so at the touch of button, I can turn the lights on. And because all of the lights on the strip are individually addressable RGB LEDs, I can also set a gradient of whatever colors I want. I ran all the cables through this tube, and then down the arm, so we have the power cable uh, for the monitor. Uh, and then we have display port to run the monitor arm, or to run the monitor off of. And also we have a USB extension for the webcam. Uh, the plan is to have two monitors. Right now I've got just a counterweight that is taped to the other monitor arm. Uh, so that this doesn't completely tilt out of whack. Uh, so once I have the other monitor in place, the plan is to use a power cable splitter uh, to power both of them off the same cord. Um, I'm not sure whether these monitors support DisplayPort chaining, so if they don't, I'm going to need to run another uh, cable down this to, dis to d drive the display on the second monitor. But yeah, that pretty much concludes this uh, project to provide a monitor mount that places one or two monitors uh, right in front of the couch, and when I do not need it, I can fold it out of the way, and it folds up against this wall here. Um, the idea with the whole parallelogram thing uh, was to have it so it could fold up under the bed, but these springs are not nearly strong enough to do that. And considering that I can also just move it out of the way against this wall as well, I think I'd be better off trying to make that more rigid uh, and have it uh, as a fixed mount. Uh, and just put it away by putting it against the wall here. And that would give me uh, a less wobbly monitor because right now uh, you can see it wobbles around a little bit thanks to the flexibility in the arm. But yeah, I think that'll about uh, wrap up this project. So that concludes this video, which took far longer to make than I expected at any point in the process. But I hope you enjoyed it. See you next week.